Space is important because that's where all of the really cool and really important science is being done. Kerbal actually played a big part in my love of space because Kerbal came out when I was in college. From whenever I was a kid, I knew I wanted to be a pilot. I knew I wanted to go to space. Back then, I was still an astronomy student, getting to see these things firsthand. Like, on my computer was just incredible. That was the way to explore this further. I realized Kerbal was special the first time I saw a screenshot of it. And I was like, what is this? This, is, this looks like, you know, rockets that are put together like, like Lego pieces or something. This is amazing. I have to try this. One of my good friends from college introduced me to KSP and I distinctly remember his words. They were, you'll, you'll love this game, this is the last game you will ever play. And a decade later, he wasn't wrong. I have a class that is um, supported by a NASA grant. So the students get Kerbal Space Program to experiment with. It creates a virtual lab for them. <laughs> when did I start dating Kerbal? Yeah, 2012. June of 2012. The first time I played Kerbal Space Program, I was in college. Um, I was studying aerospace engineering. I discovered it, I think it was 2014? You know, my first interaction with Kerbal was actually through my son. And he was playing this game, and I thought, well, that looks kind of interesting. I started to, to get, get more and more interested, started Googling it, started to, to find out, oh, there's not just battle cruisers, there's actually little green men. In the beginning, I really had no idea what, what I was doing. It was like, okay, this is hard. You can actually do the math in your homework and apply it to Kerbal and everything completely lines up. A lot of my coworkers were talking about it, this, this new game with trajectory, you know, mechanics and everything. And it seemed like the most interesting thing in the world and I downloaded it immediately. I remember hearing people you know, online chatter about Kerbal Space Program when it came out and the fact that it was really hard and I love that, so I threw myself at it. I think for me, the sense of satisfaction in Kerbal Space Program is what kind of hooked me, really. When I downloaded it, it must have been about eight o'clock in the evening, and I said, right, I'm gonna try and get a rocket into orbit. And I just sat there again and again. I refused to look at any videos or tutorials, and I remember the time I managed to finally get into, into orbit, I was exhausted and that music started playing. I looked at the curtains and the sun was coming through. I'd spent like the entire night. In that moment, I was like, this is amazing. I finally achieved something. Hello, it's Scott Manley here. And yes, 10 years ago, Kerbal Space Program came along and it turned me from a software developer into the internet rocket scientist. I discovered Kerbal Space Program when somebody posted it to the Something Awful forum saying, this could be the next Minecraft. I downloaded it and immediately started loving it, started blowing stuff up. And the funny thing was, at the time, nobody realized that you could actually get the rocket into orbit. And I figured that out very, very quickly. It was a fantastic experience to be ahead of the curve in games for once. My name is Linux Guru Gamer. Uh, I am a modder for a Kerbal Space Program. I have been nicknamed the Mod Father. I decided that I wanted to know how many hours I had in the game. So I started writing my own mod for the very first time. It was called Total Time. It was able to record in a number of ways how much time I had in the game. I don't use it anymore because it's too depressing to see how many hours I actually have in the game. The real world effects of people playing this game are already being seen because of the influence of Kerbal Space Program 1. Uh, we're, we're hearing stories about uh, the students of our subject matter experts having gotten into aerospace engineering because of the original Kerbal Space Program. 
we hear all the time, you know, we get people that come into the streams, we get people that meet us in person back when we used to do that at conferences and stuff. And they, they'd say, you know, like, oh, wow, I've learned about Kerbal from you. And now I play Kerbal and it's inspired me to get a degree in aerospace engineering. These new generations of scientists, of engineers, are going to make sure that we keep our planet safe. Space exploration is a very nice connection between what we need for the Earth and what we're exploring of outer space. Exploration, I think, is really important as it's part of the human spirit. You know, humanity's never settled for good enough. If it's always about going faster, going farther, flying higher, people have always had a desire to explore the unknown and go out and see what's out there and try to go farther and do something better than anyone's ever done before. These are really a difficult, abstract sort of concepts, even when you're like in a classroom setting and you're supposed to be learning them. I was just having a hard time visualizing it. Having something like Kerbal that I could sit down like after school and, and point to and be like, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. This is why I don't have any fun and I spend all my time in the library, but this is going to be so cool when I graduate. I'm a problem solver for Starliner. Kerbal took the complicated you know, intangible subject of orbital debris, and it made it accessible. My job is protecting the International Space Station from space debris. My name is Maxim Lernemand. I'm a remote sensing engineer at ISAI in Finland. My job is to take satellite images and turn that into useful information. Kerbal Space Program had a pretty big influence on my professional path. I actually managed to get an internship at ESA, the European Space Agency, by tweeting about KSP. We are moving to the era of commercial spaceflight, launching not professional astronauts, but citizens into space. So we're going to need a lot of rocket scientists. We're going to need a lot of people in mission control, developing the orbital mechanics for specific flight. We're going to need more and more engineers. We're going to need more and more people. And society is going to get more and more dependent on space. I'm Craig Stanton. I do digital pre-assembly for the International Space Station program. I'm going to pull this out because yeah. it makes more sense. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's this poster that you've probably seen on the internet, and it really talks about, yeah, you know, I took high school physics. I didn't get a physics degree, but, I, you know, I got a technical degree, and I went on, and, and then I actually started my work at NASA. But yeah, my understanding of orbital mechanics really accelerated once I started playing Kerbal. My job is to make sure that when we take the next part of the space station to orbit, that it will fit with what goes up there. I remember just being absolutely staggered by the scope of that thing, because it's the kind of game that I tend to look at and my brain just goes blank because the sheer volume of options you have in front of you and the sheer amount of science involved uh, just does not work with the way my brain works. Uh, but having a, a person like Vinny, who is very adept at tinkering with uh, the laws of science and physics in ways that they absolutely should not, uh, made it make a lot more sense to me. When we were deciding what features to do for, for Giant Bomb, and uh, Austin was there, and Alex was there, I think we kind of figured out that we could make a game within the game to get uh, to make a mission for us to get a Kerbal to the moon. It and sounds back. so easy now to get yes. a Kerbal to the and moon back. and back uh, and make sure we leave no Kerbal behind it's stranded two in rules. space. The, the, That's, the, the, it. It's two That's it. Two goals. That's it. That's it. And geez. yes, um, we did it. I mean, we didn't yeah, do it in the end with some help. And wound up being a thing that I thought was gonna be complicated and wound up being a lot of fun and maybe a little more complicated than, <laughs> than we had set out to do. Doing it in a series where the community could give us feedback <laughs> absolutely helped um, and made us realize, uh, uh, you know, maybe our first impression was a little off and maybe we should really learn what Delta V is <laughs> or, or some of the other things that are in the game. We did line up a okay. perfect pickup. It was perfect in its own way. It was beautiful. Playing Kerbal, I think it, it was a great reminder of all the ways in which this connects to something fundamental about the way we think through problems, the way that we, instead of having a clear and immediate instrumentalized goal, like we should go to space to get resources or something. It's just like, we should go to space to figure this out. And I think humans do good things when we're in that mode of, we should figure this out. He's so close to actually what is the basic process of assembly, integration, and test. 
when you find a mistake or a nonconformity or an anomaly. Well, Steve, go set up your rocket. You correct your implementation or your design and actually you improve and try again. Correct it, try again. Right, Steve, we have a short window here. Y'all need to head out and get your rocket ready. This is this perfect cycle. And in Camel, this is exactly the same. You learn by experiment, you crash, change something, try again, until you succeed and you reach a goal. It was all about the calculations and the precise work that we do to figure out how to make these intercepts work the first time before the mission ever happens. But in Kerbal, you get on there and you play with it and you make burns and you can see it happening and you can adjust and it delivers sort of an intuitive feel for this. I'm Andrew Schroeder. I'm a uh, test engineer for the uh, flight test instrumentation system on the CST-100. My job is to functionally test the guidance, navigation, and control system on the Starliner. The Starliner is Boeing's submission for the NASA Commercial Crew Project. In the last four or five years or so, the uh, interest in space exploration has, has really taken off exponentially. Well, I think if more and more people get into Kerbal, it's going to drive up desire for participation in the spaceflight industry, no doubt. The more you can inspire someone at an earlier age, they can, they can work towards that goal a lot earlier and get a lot farther. It's very hard to find examples of games where people are actually learning something. And actually, that was never the intention. We weren't trying to make an educational game. We were just trying to make a fun game. The Kerbal Space Program allows you to run trials and, and error. It's a very good way of learning. Failure is an option. Matter of fact, it's encouraged. You really want to fail. You want to learn why it fails. You want to try it 50 times, if that's what it takes, to tweak everything and just make it perfect. But yeah, with Kerbal, you can make those mistakes, and there's uh, very little real, real repercussions. We as real space hardware builders don't really get a lot of chances to try those things. It works most of the time, <laughs> a lot of the time. You know, you want to try something and iterate on it, and Kerbal allows you to do that really quickly without spending any money. I think if I hadn't understood the concepts already, Kerbal was a really good way to drive things home and to allow me to experiment a little bit and understand them even better. You just never stop learning. You always want to learn about the next new thing, the next new rocket, the next new way of doing something, how to improve what you're doing, and also just because we're by nature extremely curious people. I am a fellow Mexican. I'm also from Mexico City, and uh, I'm really, really excited of this. Uh, when I tell people about Kerbal Space Program, I tell them it's from Mexico City. The game started uh, by uh, Felipe's idea. Uh, he has he had this idea about, about the game he wanted to build. He was pretty much ready to, to leave the company so he could start working on the game. The owners believed so much on him and his potential that they decided to, to back him up. So he started working on the game, first with a few uh, people at the office. They started to working on a prototype that uh, did very well in some some very niche forums in, in the internet. And, and when they saw that there were people that really liked the, the, the demo, they continued working on it and assigning more, more re resources to it. I think it's Mun. I mean, it's the moon. The moon. It's the moon. Well, it depends on who I'm talking to. Oh my god, that's the hard one. Moon. <laughs> it's Mun. If I say Mun to someone who's trying to have a serious conversation and they know what's going on, they're just going to crack up laughing and be like, yes, I, 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 I connect. I pronounce it Mun. Mun. Because I remember that from the game, how they spelled it Mun instead of Moon. Hey, Andrew, is it Moon or Mun? Mun. Mun. 
To the developers of KSP1, I would say thank you so much for what you've done. This program in some ways changed my life. The game you made changed my life fundamentally. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I was delivering pizzas when I started playing Kerbal Space Program. The path of my life has diverged because of Kerbal Space Program from where it was going. With Kerbal Space Program, you can try, and you can try again, and you can learn. So, thank you. Thank you, just from the bottom of my heart. You gave me a tool to talk to my family. You are giving the next generation of space explorers a tool to learn and grow, so thank you. Which video game after 10 years still gets regular updates and still has such a loyal and gigantic community and <laughs> has people able to make YouTube videos about that and get significant amount of views. KSP is really a unique thing. It's, it's really a unique game. I, I don't think anything like that has ever existed before and I'm not sure there ever will. You guys who developed Kerbal Space Program, my hat's off to you. You have done almost the impossible. You've taken one of the most complex parts of rocket science, building rockets, flying trajectories, orbital mechanics, represented them in a fairly accurate way, and yet made it intuitive and entertaining to capture the imagination of young people, some of whom are coming to me to design the real thing as a result. So thank you. Thank you for creating a game that allows girls like me uh, to explore space and make it a reality and, and maybe start a career one day in, in this industry. Thank you. Yeah, a big thank, thank you. It's amazing for... what you've done. I want to thank the developers for making this thing and keeping this thing alive for so long. It's just phenomenal what KSP has become. I mean, look at Elon Musk from SpaceX. He occasionally references phrases and terms from KSP like, rapid and scheduled disassembly. His handle was Harvester, and um, he was the lead developer. He was the one who um, had the idea for Kerbal, and, and you know, my hat's off to him. To me, it's, it's an indie masterpiece of, of just ingenuity, um, something that no one thought of before, and um, putting this universe that was in your head into a game uh, uh, so incredibly thankful. Um, for the time and energy and the dedication you've put on this project and, and I hope you're doing well on your other projects now. This is, uh, <laughs> this is quite special. This is, wow. I wish I could hang that video on my wall. I remember thinking that I would have been really happy if the game could maybe be an enjoyable, like, fun thing for maybe Orbiter fans and the like. Uh, and I remember thinking like, well, I would consider this a success if, if it can keep itself going, like I will consider this a success. Or uh, if um, even one person finds this interesting enough to take an interest in space flight and space in general, I would consider this an, a complete win. So to see like where it's gotten now it's it just boggles the mind it's just uh, surreal to even think about i actually wonder how much kerbal influenced these young guys that are now trying to build their own uh, micro launchers uh, other people that that mark our industry were inspired by things like star trek and 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 star wars i do believe that Kerbal will have inspired a whole new generation of rocket scientists. What happens if a lot of people play this game and come to a deeper understanding of the way the world works as a result of that? They were just trying to, to do a, a nice game about a very specific topic about space exploration. And uh, I think we are particularly pride when we look back and how it started, how much has it grown and where we are now and uh, how people really appreciate the game. We have players with more than 5,000 hours uh, on KSP. We all in, in the team um, acknowledge and we are grateful for. We tell ourselves the story that one day maybe we'll get an email from somebody on Mars saying, the reason that I'm here is because I played your game 20 years ago. If that happens, I can die happy. 
first time I heard about Kerbal Space Program uh, was from my college roommate. He told me about it, um, and he was he was playing it a bunch. And so he called me up to his room. You know, I sat behind him and, and watched him play it a little bit. And that that's the first time I heard of it. And I'm like, wow, this looks really cool. Kerbal played a major role in what I'm doing on Mars today, playing the game and playing it with friends. Just built my enthusiasm for spacecraft exploration and for the career path that I was going down.